All right, switching things up this week with the Outliers Mining Mini Series. So we are doing fireside chat, rapid fire style with our fleet management specialists. So joining me, I've got Mike Plessy, Georg Wendrick, and Terry Tutak. Uh, all of these guys, super experienced dispatchers. They've uh, lived and breathed this for years on Minesite. Now they're specialists, go around the world and help tune up dispatch systems and have had some really good wins. So guys, welcome. Hey, thanks Ryan. Nice to have us. Okay, so I encourage anyone watching this, take a look at their LinkedIn, look them up on the OMS website. These uh, guys have a, a wealth of knowledge that's uh, that's worthy of sharing. But jumping right into it, first question, and we'll start with, with uh, Mike, we'll go to Georg, and then we'll go to Terry. So what do you guys see as the biggest problem that dispatchers have on a mine site when you go there? Uh, the biggest one for me is is the collaboration between the teams, the communication from the field, getting everyone on the same page and requesting the same things so that they're asking the same questions and then all working together as a team instead of having individual goals. Love it. Georg? Yeah, couldn't agree more with Mike. Um, one of the things I feel is usually lacking is it's some sort of a, um, a training program for new dispatchers. Um, what we see is you're only as good as your trainer and your trainer is only as good as the trainer from before him. But there's usually not a <clears throat> there's usually not a standardized um, training process or program. Um, you basically just get thrown into the seat and you can hope that the guy who's teaching you knows his way around. I would say it's running by gut feel. You guys are spending millions of dollars on FMS software and how to use it. We're trying to introduce people how to recognize that software to predict upcoming interruptions and needs of the mine site. So instead of going by gut that we need three trucks here to keep it happy, the software might say you might need two and a half or you might need more. You got to wring out some extra production out of a system that you didn't realize you had there and just using that data that's at their fingertips effectively. Okay, so next next question coming up. What do you guys see um, biggest gaps with the technology itself when you get to a mine site? Yeah, one of the things we we usually introduce that comes in our tool kit per se is like create that standard reporting. Um, you know, find out what do you need to report, how do you need to report it, and to whom do you need to report it. Uh, many many times you come on a site and there is a ton of things not working properly. And it's not because the dispatchers don't know how to use the system, it's because there is an actual, there's bugs in the system. But they just take this for like, that's just the way the software works, which is not the case. But because there's no person responsible for the system usually, there's usually an absence of a dispatch coordinator or dispatch engineer. Most of the sites don't have those kind of designated roles. So nobody really knows who to go talk to to get something fixed. Yeah, okay. Good one. Terry? I'd say it's just standardizing the role. You have one crew that does all the back end work. System runs fine for the next rotation. A new crew comes on, it's running fine, and then that crew comes back and they have to go and recalibrate, refix, make the mind map proper, whatever the jargon might be. But it's just getting everybody doing their fair share. So it's just not up to one or two crews looking after it, and then the other crews getting to coast and educating everybody on that. Got it. Yeah, that's huge. If it's uh, if it's not set up right, it's not going to give you the right decisions. Exactly. And goes back to that first point I made of you want to be able to use the software to predict future behavior. You have to also trust it as well. So you need to understand what you're inputting and why so that you can trust the output. Yeah. OK. Uh, how about this one? What is a, a common misconception with the role of a dispatcher? Um, so it could be, you know, what does the mine site think a dispatcher does and what should they actually be doing? But dispatchers do a lot of like administrative work and uh, they get handed a lot of administrative work instead of spending their time um, predicting, trying to predict the future and, and set the system up so it does predict the future. Yeah, couldn't agree with you more with you. But what is the role as a dispatcher is really the question. Is the role as a dispatcher to 
do payroll, to do you know vacation approvals, to do um, small investigations, or is he supposed to be you know driving and optimizing production? And every time you you do something like this, you take away from being able to optimize your fleet. Why do you need to optimize your fleet? It's not because we have enough trucks. It's usually because we have too little trucks. So we need to make sure that we don't have any wait times, that we utilize these these trucks to its you know utmost capacity. So that yeah, so true. You're trying to look after overtime. Meanwhile, the one person who can have the biggest impact on you know plus or minus thousands of tons, which are plus or minus hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars on a shift, that one person should be focused on squeezing the squeezing all the production they can out of that shift. 100%. And that the dispatcher is a mushroom in an office somewhere. They need to be incorporated in a lot of decisions. Like you said, they are in charge of a lot of decisions that will impact production, but they need the right information to help make those decisions. They need to be informed from engineering, from maintenance, from the field supervision, understand what the mine plan is. They have a lot of ripple effects from their decisions and other people's decisions also ripple effect into them that it's a very interconnected system and you know terry that really leads into the importance of roles and responsibilities because when we have seen coming to previous projects where the mine dispatcher is just a glorified administrative assistant instead of being the mine controller he can or she can be um, understanding what happens at any point in time at any point in the mine and can make the proper decisions, avoid negative trends that can develop. If the role is not clearly defined, you have 15 people telling the dispatcher what to do because to serve their own purpose versus mm -hmm. letting the dispatcher decide what is the best for production and be that central hub that everybody goes to to get the big picture to understand what is happening up there. Yeah, and that even goes into awareness of those responsibilities so that the supervisors know what they need to feed to dispatch and what the impact of those decisions can be. And having an awareness course to help educate everybody of the back end of the software to demystify either whatever FMS software that is being utilized. So making all facets of the operation aware what those decisions are, how they're being made and why they're being made so that they are seeing hiccups in the field. They know how to communicate that to the dispatch office to look for a solution and troubleshoot that system and can put a fix as it were. I don't know. We, we always talk about one thing like like a dispatcher is a forecaster and without that communication from the from all of the parties involved, supervision, everyone above, mind planning, you, you can't be a good forecaster without all the information. So you need to communicate all that information so you can forecast issues. Which Hey guys, well, we'll leave it there. Um, if anybody wants to find out more from you guys, best place to get in touch with you? LinkedIn, like everything, so. Yeah. yeah. On another note, um, if you have watched this video and you're curious about some subjects or topics you should be talking about, why don't you just put it in the comment of this video uh, mm. on LinkedIn or wherever, and uh, we'll see if we can address it. Yeah, good one. Yeah. Thank you very much for having us, Ryan. Okay. Thanks, Thanks guys.